So if you haven't heard, former SBC president and Touch Ministries founder, Charles Stanley has passed away. And the thing that has the internet buzzing right now is a statement that his son, false teacher Andy Stanley, put on Twitter a few days ago. Andy says that his dad's last words to him were, I couldn't be prouder of you, Andy. Now, I've never followed or watched Charles Stanley. In the past, I've seen his sermons played on TV, and I do know about him. And what I've heard about him is that for the most part, he's pretty sound. Now, that may have changed later in life, I don't know. But from what I've heard, he was much more in line with scripture than his son is, or was. And if that's the case, for him to say, I couldn't be prouder of you, Andy, that's a problem, okay? Because his son is a flat out demonic false teacher. Now, a father that's a preacher that has a son that is a preacher, he can and should love his son. But to be proud of him, knowing that he's a false teacher that's made it his life's work to dishonor and to trample the things of God, nah, I don't, I don't see how that, I don't see how you can be proud of him, okay? Let's look at two video clips of dad and son dealing with the issue of homosexuality. Well, this email comes from Ginger. And she says, after discovering our son's negative views of Christianity and the Bible, he states he is a gay Christian and wrote that he does not believe it is a sin. He feels that his homosexual lifestyle is normal and believes God will accept him. Can he get into heaven while practicing this lifestyle? I'm glad you asked this question. Lots of people would like to have an answer. Well, if you'll notice the issues here, number one, he has a negative view of Christianity in the Bible, which says he has set aside the very moral basis for living, and that's the Word of God. And he states that he is a gay Christian, and he does not believe it is a sin. Now, what is he doing? He's going by his beliefs and his feelings. And so what we have to ask is this. Are you going to be governed by what you feel or by what the Word of God says? For example, he says he doesn't feel like it's a sin, and uh, he feels it's normal. What does God say about this? And in Romans chapter 1, here's what he says. In verse 26, one of the strongest things God says, For this reason God gave them over to degrading passions, for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way, also the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another, men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. Now, if you'll go to First Timothy, for example, and the first chapter, listen to what the Scripture says, because we're talking about what God thinks, not what somebody else thinks. What does God say about this? And here's what he says. I want you to see what the traveling companions of homosexuality is like. He says, and immoral men and homosexuals and kidnappers and liars and perjurers and whatever else is contrary to sound teaching according to this glorious gospel. Puts it all together. Then I want you to go, if you will, to 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, and here is the question. In the ninth verse, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, let me ask you a question. Does that sound like something that you would really and truly believe that God agrees with your lifestyle when in these three passages alone, it is very, very clear. God does not agree with the lifestyle of a homosexual. I know 1 Corinthians 6, and I know Leviticus, and I know Romans 1. It's so interesting to talk about all that stuff. But just, oh my goodness, a gay man or woman who wants to worship their heavenly father, who did not answer the cry of their heart when they were 12 and 13 and 14 and 15. God said no, and they still love God. We have some things to learn from a group of men and women who love Jesus that much and who want to worship with us. And I know the verses. I know the clobber passages, right? We got to figure The children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who doesn't practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who doesn't love his brother. Wow. If you don't practice the righteousness laid out by God in His Word and show love for 
others. If you're a hater and you're vicious and you're vengeful and you're destructive and you're lawless, you're a child of the devil. Children of the devil and the children of God can't make a partnership. That has to do with behavior. The next comparison has to do with character or what fellowship has light with darkness. We're talking about nature now, what koinonia. Light is a metaphor for truth. Darkness is a metaphor for lies. We could also say that light is a metaphor for virtue. Dark is a metaphor for sin. The children of light and the children of darkness together cooperating for anything that is intended to advance the kingdom of God is impossible. 